welcome to another edition of Storytime. And we'll, we'll start with a promotional announcement today. My good friend Professor Ken Keg is having a class next fall entitled Latin American, I'm sorry, in the spring, entitled Latin American History Through Film. Women in Latin American History. Be there. The story for today concerns uh, uh, my most memorable concert experience. And I've had a lot of those because, you know, I love the rock and roll. But uh, about three years ago, uh, on one of the endless uh, Bob Dylan tours, uh, I happened to have three tickets, and I was taking uh, uh, my two sons to see uh, Bob Dylan in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we were milling around outside the concert when suddenly one of uh, um, my son Pike's friends showed up. And I thought, well, he really wants to go. I'll give him my ticket and I'll scalp one. And so I wandered about looking for a ticket to buy. And I came upon this kind of battered old uh, uh, Vietnam veteran in his flying jacket who was holding up a ticket. I looked at the ticket, and I swear it said 1-1-A-A, which means, the way those tickets read, first row. First row for Bob Dylan, a great hero of mine. I said, how much do you want for it? He said, face value. I couldn't believe this. And it drew a crowd, and pretty soon people were arguing and saying the ticket wasn't the right color and so on. And suddenly the crowd parted for this very... Uh, officious looking young man who walked up and said, let me see that ticket. And he looked at the ticket and said, I am professor of rock and roll at Case Western University. Professor of rock and roll, what a king. He says, this is not a real ticket. So at this point, the sad old vet stood up, shook his head, took me by the sleeve. I'll never forget that, just like that and pulled me over to the ticket window. He put down the ticket, said, is this a real ticket? And the woman at the ticket counter said, well, yes, it certainly is. And if you want, you can take the VIP entrance. Whoa, man, I was thrilled, but I wanted to go in with my kids. So I bought the ticket from the guy, and we hugged and embraced, and we're bonded forever and so forth. And then the next thing I knew, I was walking toward the first row for the concert. I was stopped, believe it or not, at the mosh pit. A mosh pit for Bob, who would have thought? But I wanted to get as close as I could, so I asked the big tough guy at the gate of the mosh pit, can I go in there? I must have seemed a little frail to him or old or something like that because he said, well, yeah, if you want to. But the next thing I knew, I was in the mosh pit and at the front of the stage, there's an extremely large woman standing next to me who had, according to her, followed the tour all the way from Alaska. And uh, she, that's what she did. She followed Bob Dylan. And I was talking to her when suddenly the lights went down. You know how they do boom like that? I looked straight up, and I was staring into Bob's nostrils. And the woman, who was very large, just kind of came around me at that point, and I realized that this is where I was going to be for the rest of the concert. But it was okay, because I couldn't have had a better scene. And Bob was, uh, had a couple of uh, young guitarists with him, and he was rocking hard, and it was just incredible. I was just having the greatest time. And then came my moment of flashback, because at the end of the concert, I was standing close enough, and when Bob reached his little hand down, to shake hands with a few people, I was there. And my, with my fingers touched his wispy fingers. That's the flashback point. 1974, Denver, Colorado. My brother and me. First row seats for Bob Dylan and the band with Levon Helm and Robbie Robertson and everybody. End of the concert. The roadies step aside, people on the front row can go up to the stage on that night as well. Bob's wispy fingers reach down and touch mine. Does history, rock and roll history, repeat itself? 
in this case, it is.